I don't know about you, but during COVID-19, I've taken up a lot of new hobbies. For one, I started this YouTube channel. Two, I'm trying to teach myself to play the ukulele. And now I've started making homemade gin. And it's been super fun to experiment with gin recipes and it's really easy. All you need to do is start with some vodka and add the right spices and herbs. So today I want to show you how to make your own homemade gin. I know you might be thinking, well, aren't vodka and gin two totally different things? But are they? I mean, vodka basically is a clear, tasteless liquid. And that's not my opinion. I'm not trying to be rude to vodka. The legal definition of vodka in the United States says this. Vodka is to be so distilled or so treated that it has no distinctive character aroma, taste, or color. Nothing is to be unique about a vodka. That's the whole idea of vodka. It's just a pure mixture of ethanol, which is alcohol, and water, which is great for us because this means vodka is basically a blank canvas, and I plan to turn that canvas into a more delicious gin. In fact, manufacturers of commercial gins, they begin making gin using a neutral spirit. And this neutral spirit is their base. And if you look up on their websites, what they call their neutral spirit is just an alcohol produced usually from a mixture of rye, wheat, potatoes, or, or other grains. And what they really mean by this neutral base is they are starting with vodka. So when it comes to gin, it's basically just a flavored vodka that the predominant flavor is from juniper berries. And recently I found out you can find juniper berries or these dark blue berries in your local spice store. And these juniper berries give a lot of the flavor to the gin. They have this chemical called alpha pinene. And this is what gives that pine tree or rosemary flavor to gin. And it also has another chemical called limonene. And this gives that really citrusy flavor. So gin is basically vodka plus juniper berries as flavoring. Now, most commercial gins have a long list of other herbs and spices added. Some commercial gins have over 10 of these herbs and spices. Here's the most popular ones you would see. Now, I didn't find all of these spices, but I found enough to make a really well-rounded gin using juniper berries and a couple of other spices. Let me start by saying this is only my second batch of gin and I've been tweaking the recipe each time, but I'll put the current recipe below in the description. So what you start out with is just your vodka. You can buy whatever brand you want. It doesn't really matter, but I use 1.75 liters of New Amsterdam vodka. And then it comes to your spices. So what I added was 30 grams juniper berries, six grams grains of paradise, six grams coriander, four grams of licorice root, and then a gram of orange peel, one gram of lemon peel, and one gram of lime zest. Now you can find all these spices pretty easily in your local spice store. You might just have to ask for help there, but I found all these spices without too much trouble. Now the first thing you'll need to do is actually empty out a bit of vodka from that vodka bottle because we need some room to add those spices. So I emptied out about two shots worth of vodka to make that room. And then once you have all your ingredients, all your spices and herbs weighed, weighed out, just use a funnel to um, sort of get those spices and herbs into the vodka bottle. Once everything is in tightly, make sure you really tightly close that bottle because you're going to turn it upside down a couple of times just to get everything sort of mixed all together. 
And then it's easy. You just let it sit for a couple days and sort of let those flavors come out into the alcohol. Now to track the progress of the gin as it sort of is infused with all these other ingredients, take a sip out maybe once a day just to see how it's going. And in about three days, once all the flavors has have mellowed and it's in a place that you like, then go ahead and strain out all those herbs and spices and just you have your gin. You may have noticed that the homemade version of gin is sort of this deep brown color, which is not the normal color of gin. Most commercial gin is more clear. It's colorless. And the reason commercial gin is colorless is it goes through an extra step called distillation. Now, once a manufacturer has a new batch of gin after the alcohol has been steeped with all those berries and spices, it goes through distillation. And distillation is just a simple technique that separates out chemical compounds based on their boiling point. So what the manufacturer of gin is trying to do during distillation is only keep the um, ethanol water mixture. So it just wants the alcohol portion. And we know that a mixture of ethanol and water boils at about 78 degrees Celsius. So that is the only part that is kept in commercial gin. Any compounds that boil below that or above that are actually just tossed out, which means a lot of commercial gin is sort of stripped of the pigments or other colorful compounds that lend it this brown color. Of course, most of us don't have a distillation set up at home, so we'll just have this brown colored homemade gin. There's nothing wrong with it. It just is not going through this extra step and losing its pigmentation. So this homemade version of gin, this is actually much more similar to slow gin, which is slow like S-L-O-E. And if you've ever had slow gin, you'll notice it's actually this deep red or brown color. And that's because like, unlike other commercial gins, slow gin is not distilled again after it's been sort of infused with all those spices and herbs. So our homemade version, you had to tell by the deep brown color of our homemade version, it's much more similar to uh, slow gin instead of these other commercial gins. And that's all it takes to make your very own gin. Like I said, I'll put my recipe below in the description, but feel free to take it and sort of make it your own, make a couple little tweaks based off what you like or don't like. And remember to have a lot of fun. I'll talk to you next time.